uh, I want from the outset to indicate that uh, uh, government is indeed pleased and happy to note that the Copper Belt University has been doing some good works in partnership with other partners uh, for not mentioning them. It's not that probably they are not important, but I would want to recognize collectively all the partners who have been working with the Copper Belt University in implementing this important project, the social and environmental uh, trade-offs in African agriculture uh, project. I think as earlier indicated, uh, this project which has been going on for the past four and a half years has carried out a number of research uh, activities focused on understanding the social, economic and environmental impacts of agricultural expansion into forests and other natural habitats. And I think if I may mention here uh, that agriculture has been identified as one of the major drivers in terms of deforestation. Uh, that is changing uh, land use from forest to uh, agriculture. So this project, it cannot be emphasized that it came at the right time when Zambia is actually grappling with a lot of uh, high rates of uh, uh, deforestation. Now, following the research conducted in eastern, uh, western and northwestern provinces, this workshop was therefore organized to share key findings and get and provide feedback from the communities. And the ministry is very pleased to note that the community members were not left out and they were invited to this important meeting. More often, we see that when such kind of important issues are being discussed, you find that the local communities are left out. But I want, on behalf of the ministry, to appreciate uh, the fact that some local community members were invited to this important workshop, uh, our lawmakers were invited to this important workshop, and also the local authority representatives were invited to this important workshop, and indeed other government uh, uh, representatives. On behalf of the Minister of Green Economy and Environment, I want to state that government is indeed committed to addressing issues related to climate change, I think we have all seen the devastating effects of climate change here in Zambia. We have seen how floods have affected some local communities, particularly in the southern province, and also even here around Lusaka and other parts of the country. This is as a result of the effects of climate change, and mainly driven by environmental degradation, particularly deforestation, clearing trees for various purposes. So it is very important to note that some research findings point to some concrete uh, possible solutions which may be uh, implemented. And like I indicated earlier on, government is ready to take on these research results and ensure that they are implemented. I recall that Professor Tsale there indicated how Zambia is well known for policy, I mean for policy development, but when it comes to implementation, I think this is where uh, we seem to be, uh, to be lacking. It is therefore hopeful that the results that have been presented uh, in the last two days will definitely go a long way in contributing towards reducing inequalities and also promote ecosystem uh, conservation. And I want also to reiterate that the government therefore recognizes CBU's uh, contribution in conducting research that could influence our policy. And I think what we have noticed in this country is that most of our policy development does not uh, take into account research results. And I think it's important, and I would want to implore on the uh, Copper Belt University and other academic institutions which may be present, uh, represented here that we need to reach out and engage government and share such good results so that government may use such results in terms of uh, uh, policy development. So beyond this meeting, I would want to encourage uh, uh, the project and particularly CB who has been the custodian of this project to share the research results, not only to government, but I think even uh, if we can take an approach where we can simplify the results so that each and every member of the local communities can be able to understand what these results mean and how they can actually change their lives. 
more often than not, we get these research results and leave them in the English language. And you find that when you reach out to the communities, it's very difficult for them to appreciate. So I want to implore the uh, research uh, team to consider those aspects where the research results can actually be simplified to the level of uh, uh, local uh, uh, communities. And uh, further also, I would want to implore upon the civil society organization that we need to work as partners in everything that we do. The government, the private sector, the local communities, our legislators. If we follow that kind of approach, then we'll be able to achieve um, a lot of um, uh, uh, results. Government is also happy to note that uh, you know the solutions which are being proposed here aim at uh, aim at uh, you know they aim at building capacity. They also looked at uh, how we can trade off between the increasing population vis-a-vis -vis, uh, conservation. I think that balance is indeed uh, required. In the 1960s, when Zambia just got independence, we are only less than 5 million people, if I'm not mistaken, I, I may be corrected. But now we are talking about 18 million people. So meaning that there will always be pressure on the, uh, on the forest reserves, for example, for development. But what is important is how do you balance, you know, development versus conservation? Because people will need... In the interview, uh, you can tell us your name, your position in this project and uh, answer this question. What are these uh, drivers of agricultural expansion and their influences in yeah. that expansion? Okay. That's a more value. Okay, my, my, is it on? So my name is Phil Franks. I am a leading a researcher in IIED, that is the International Institute for Environment and Development, and a co-leader of this Sentinel project. Um, the Sentinel project is focusing on the issue of balancing the needs for land for agricultural production with the need to keep some forest for climate change, mitigation, um, forest products, water, rivers, and other and biodiversity, of course. Uh, at the moment, and at the moment, the main cause of loss of forests and woodlands in Zambia and in many countries in Africa, is the expansion of agriculture. So we're looking at how that expansion of agriculture could be better managed to try to retain more of the really important forest. Not all of it, but at least the more important parts which are important for biodiversity, water catchment and so on. That's what this project is about. Um, particularly the bit that I've been presenting here at this meeting concerns the um, very normal assumption that one way to reduce expansion of farming is to grow more on a certain area of land. It's called intensification. And you can use fertilizer and herbicides and mechanized cultivation to produce more on a, a certain area of land and of course high yielding varieties. And it is always assumed that that will reduce uh, the clearing of forests. The problem is that in other countries, and particularly in um, outside Africa, in fact the opposite occurs. So when you produce more on a certain area of land with inputs, often you get more profit and you are therefore encouraged to expand your farm. So the most obvious example is in Brazil, where the Amazon is being cleared for soya um, production and that uh, is used in very intensive methods with um, large-scale cultiva mechanized cultivation, um, high-yielding varieties, herbicides and all those things. And they have accelerated the deforestation. So, but we assume here in Africa it's all very different and that if you use fertilizer and herbicides you will actually reduce deforestation. What we find from the project is it depends where you are. But there are, we have seen in the communities where we've been working in Kateti district and Chitakoloki that for certain crops um, the use of these inputs is causing deforestation but for uh, other crops it isn't. For example, in Kateti the, use, uh, the growing of soya beans with herbicides is uh, accelerating deforestation um, but not growing maize with fertilizer. But in Chitakoloki, it is the growing maize with fertilizer that is to some extent seems to be um, pushing deforestation a bit more than 
before. So uh, it's a complicated picture, but it is a really important message that you can't assume that just intensifying agriculture, putting more fertilizer, herbicides, mechanized cultivation, etc., is going to take a, a reduced deforestation. According to biodiversity, yes. Uh, here in Africa, of course, uh, when we talk of uh, culture, it's trying to escape the natural source and so on. How do you compare biodiversity here in Africa and uh, other countries? Well, I mean, biodiversity. There is biodiversity itself, which is a, a scientific concept about the number of different species of animals and plants. And Africa, parts of Africa are just as biodiverse um, as, as parts in other regions. Um, but biodiversity is also the key to the health of the forest. So the forest is not just about biodiversity, it's about water, it's about storing carbon, it's about timber and other products from the forest. If the biodiversity goes down uh, and climate change um, happens, these forests will, um, will suffer and, and disappear. And water, as people know here, the rivers will dry up, the climate will get hotter, uh, there will be no firewood, the women will have to walk further. Usually the women's job, they'll have to walk further to catch firewood. So the biodiversity is, maybe itself is not so important to most people, but the, the, the health of the forest, which depends on the biodiversity, is very important. Thank you. There's one other thing I could say, which you can cut out if you don't want to.